What could we pick in to Sona and Caitlyn? Something that is short range and probably can't outpush her. It's like, it's interesting. You can see the counterplay and you can see the counter engage, but with Sona not being a champion like Fresh, who dives in, leaps onto the AD carrier support, like we saw very frequently in the last game uh, with Grom, it's, it's just something you don't really expect. But either way, we're now moving on to the uh, delay period in which we'll have a commercial break, but after that we'll be in-game with Eternity and Hadar's Fight Club. Hadar's Fight Club currently won up on Eternity. We'll see if they can pull it on back. Until then, we'll see you soon.
Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the quarterfinals, I do believe, on uh, the 12th EUS Challenger series we are now at. How time flies. I am Spottington, I am joined by Pulse, and this is going to be the second game between Hadel's Fight Club and Eternity. Yes, indeed, and it always amuses when um, amuses me when we say quarterfinals, because the quarterfinals in this case are the first round every week. So uh, it's, it's not like these teams have really battled anywhere just as of yet within this tournament. Of course, they have gotten themselves to Challenger, which is a feat in itself. Lego like, Ego sitting in the mid lane, apparently in every team we've ever seen ever. Casadal looking for the frontman, spearheading the assault into the jungle of the red buff. There are pings going down. We'll see if they choose to engage or counter engage or try to stop them from stealing their stuff. But uh, at the moment, it seems like they're just going to sit back, see if they walk on out and uh, hang around. Yeah, we've seen Lego My Ego, I mean, all over the place. I mean, the first time I ever saw him, as I recall, he was subbing for Heimerdinger's Colossi, like, shortly after they came into existence. So, in terms of Challenger series, he's been in at least three teams, as far as I can remember, uh, in, the, in these tournaments. Uh, Cyrus Q going to be starting off at that blue buff there, and... Uh, you know, we've seen a couple of these guys actually on a couple of different teams, and indeed we've seen Sven Skeren in the LCS, sadly no longer. But uh, yeah, all of these guys, solid players, solid backgrounds, and uh, there's nothing too much that's going to come out of that level 1 fight other than that ward control. Yes indeed, and both junglers starting in their own respective bottom jungles, and will probably go for their double buff. And Mumu has the option of going for his wolves after that, made with the race, and then picking up his buff, because he likes to farm gets to that level stick when his ganks are extremely strong, and his team fighting with Tentacle is even better and improved. But though his early ganking is also very strong, he can't however get into a straight one-on-one -on -one fight with Elise, because her dueling potential is incredibly, incredibly good. So will be what Amumu is looking not to do, but uh, in fact, just shooting straight for his next buff. Yeah, Lee's is one of those junglers that has a, a habit of jumping into your jungle and trying to 1v1 you and kill you, especially if you're a jungler that gets low on your clear, which Amumu can do, depending how liberal he is with his uh, pots there. But he will be going for that uh, double golem, so looking for a more kind of sustained clear, not for that immediate ganking pressure, I believe. Which isn't surprising, that's kind of how Amumu tends to work. He's a farm jungler, he gets his levels and then he's relevant. But Svenskeren may look to take advantage of that by just kind of counter jungling and indeed looking to make his presence felt in the lanes. Yeah, there's no way he can really gank successfully. Top lane's too pushed and the passive from Zach will make sure that he won't get the straight up kill. But counter jungling is the next best option just to kind of put Amumu a little behind. Moving around into the mid lane, Cyrus Q looking for this gank. Jump in from Lego My Ego, Flash comes out, just out of the way, abandons us. And Sven Scarab from the top side will be revealed by the ward, so they should know his current location. Waiting in the jungle, right, this is probably the best place Sven Scarab can make with all the lanes pushed, is to not only counter jungle, but look for a pick onto a Mumu. Waiting there for quite a while, Pink has gone down. And uh, whoop, Lego My Ego moving up. Got to be very careful with all the skills currently checked in for Sven Scarab. He has the ability to lock him down, but doesn't look like anything's happening in the near future. Well, it could happen at any moment, that's the thing. He has got that flash on Svenskeren and he's going in. Yeah, and in the bot lane as well. Migza is being chased down along with Heydar. Fine out on, on the aggression. Piltover comes down and the net to try and catch on up. Piltover comes out once again. One more type will seal the deal. First blood picked up by Caitlyn. Yeah, Lego My Ego took a big chunk of damage in that mid lane, but he was able to get out with the Kha'Zix jump. I don't know if he used his flash, no, he did not, in fact, do so. So, that's definitely coming out in the favor of Eternity there. Cyrus Q looking like he may come for this mid gank, but Sven Skaren, I think, has his number. He's level 3, though. So this could be interesting if they went in. I'm not even sure who would win in a straight up 2 2 here. Yeah, especially with that mid lane. Uh, top lane, though, Vince actually drops incredibly low as Freddy puts down the punishment. And well, well, indeed has to recall, still has the blob of the passive, but doesn't want to be popped into that because good uh, good kiting around the turret shot should allow him to pick up the kill even if that happens. Still sticking around though under the turret. Has to be incredibly careful. Blades of Torment at level 3, Ignite is still up. And uh, has a good chance of potentially finishing him off, but doesn't choose to go in. Alright, so both these guys are just going to be kind of continuing to farm this out, I think. 
This is an interesting point to make though, in that Artrox is probably quite a good counter to Zac. His sustain is going to scale up harder as the game goes on, and he is going to be able to just go toe to toe with Zac, who usually relies on grinding you down slowly and eventually going for the all in when he's just got that significant health advantage. Goes for the you know the burst with the let's bounce and the constant unstable matter. But Artrox's health sustain when he's below fifty percent is just ridiculous. He, he you know he you cannot get rid of him. And his wave clear is also a pretty good answer, so Zack's going to have a hard time either roaming or fighting his lane opponent. And it's worth mentioning we're on the current patch, so Zack, uh, the changes have come in, right? I'm not just absolutely I, crazy. I do believe they came in uh, over yeah. night last night. Yeah, so Zack um, will have those changes to his uh, his passive. So in the top lane, because most of, them, most of the top lanes are melee, there's a lot more counterplay. I'm gonna hold that for a second. Lego Ego jumps in with leaps straight into Taze Zephyr. Perfect balance toss. Counter guy comes in from Spence Garen. Flash into Taze Zephyr once again. Picks up the kill. Repel onto a minion. Gets Spence Garen out of dodge for 1 for 0 trade. Meanwhile, the top lane, the kill is picked up to, into Vidixachi. Oh, so a little bit surprising to see him going down there, but uh, you can see from the location of that green goop next to the tower, he was out of tower range when he was taken down, and the maxing of the Blades of Torment actually probably means Artrox, well, he's not too worried about uh, um, a, a sort of wave clear. I, I want to call it wave clear, but killing Zack's blobs. Yeah, lovely. And uh, in the mid lane, Spence Garen's found himself. Lego Ego, huge damage comes out, takes their fear and the lead. Can he connect the dots and pick up the next kill? Has the car comes back into the mid lane and uh, should do enough to get Spence Garen out of the way. Pins him down with Mark of the Storm. Another tower drop comes out and doesn't quite pick up the kill. Just kind of dicing with death. That will give Kennen an advantage to push it up to the tower. Lego My Ego does not dare stay in, even though he knows what Kennen is going to do here. Uh, that was an interesting thundering shuriken. Don't know if we call that on screen. But um, regardless, it's a little bit of an advantage. But Cyrus Q is the guy who's going to pick this farm up, and that actually suits. Um, that actually. Suits Eternity, that's who they are, and they're not X Eternity, and they're not X and Nexus, and, and, and they're not Heidel's Fight Club, but uh, Eternity, quite well, just on the grounds that Amumu hitting level 6 earlier is always, always a good thing. Yeah, in the top lane, Vince actually used both Ignite and Let's Bounce to drop uh, Freddy 1, 2, 2, very low indeed, but because he, as he was mentioning before, when he's in below 50%, and that, that mark, his life steal is absolutely ridiculous. Vince actually still has the potential to take him out, though Massacre's popped. Doesn't go all in and crazy sustain right now. Honestly, if he did trade off against him, I'm not sure that Zach would win. Yeah, that's the thing you have to be so careful of. It means basically this is actually can never go all in. Like, unless he's got like every single skill off cooldown and Freddy is down to like 10% HP so he can just burst him before he can get three auto attacks down. Then, other than that, the only chance he has to all in is if he's got Ignite up, because he can then uh, gimp that sustain out. Uh, but Sven Skaren is coming around the side here. I think both teams are aware of this potential, but it's actually not going anywhere near the tower. Cyrus Q is behind as well. Yeah, looking for this engagement, Cyrus Q. In fact, Lanza could be on to Vix. Actually, he definitely won't have a passive blades at all when it comes down. Doesn't choose to follow, uh, follow up. I believe he did have Dark Flight, but I guess how diving against Mumu, who is recently at level 6 and will indeed have Curse of the Sad Mummy, unless he miss skills, which is something you really can't rely on. Yeah, that's uh, that's not the best plan. I mean, it <laughs> might work on one... tactics. <laughs> it, it's something we might well have seen. I've done it in the past, I'm sure, on a Mumu. I've done it. I've, I've miss skilled everything, but in bot lane, a massive fight is kicking off. You know, on the mid lane, and the, the, the bot lane indeed, fight comes down, fire that drops low, Ignite still ticking off, help up keeps him alive. And in the mid lane, the fight has finally commenced, and Curse has had moment for the counter gauge, Freddy drops low, still with the blood well, won't drop if he's uh, taken down once, and in fact, no kills go out anywhere. Surprising, but a lot of cooldowns used. You've got the Crescendo, you've got the Stranglethorns, you've got the Ultimate from Graves and from Caitlyn. All of these things being used, but the bot lane means basically Zyra Graves is actually taking an advantage at the moment, pushing them up against that tower, and they may be able to take it out relatively shortly. Which uh, is an impressive feat, considering we were expecting Caitlyn to kind of just come out on top here. Uh, regardless, however, I don't know what on earth was going on in the mid fight. I was not looking at that, and, and it really... Really was quite messy. 
Yeah, because you passed me over to the bot fight, and I was thinking the mid fight was going to happen first, and more was going to happen, and then it didn't, so I moved over to the bot lane, and then saw something happen in the mid lane, so it was like, it was constant action in both of those places, and it was indeed very messy. But it's actually coming into the mid lane, and could look for the gank onto Ken, he will have more damage and more levels, resulting in better gank potential than potentially the jungler at this stage. Since uh, Search Q has indeed used his Cursed uh, Sad Mummy, and that is on cooldown. But Physics is actually heading on back up to the top lane. Yeah, and he's just going to go back to being kind of bullied around a little bit by Artrox. 99 Bot lane, though. No. Finite picks up the kill onto Mixer. Search Q still looking to follow up. Good juke out of the way. Quick draw as. Oh, Van just tossed, but still 1 for 0 so far. Ben Skerrin looking to potentially do some damage or at least keep Graves in lane so he can push out the wave. But they might be there moving on to Drake, or at least they're going to contest it. That's a smart move here. They know that they did just lose a man in that bottom lane, but they also know that the bot lane cannot contest. Rom and Finite are just way, way too low. So that's a free dragon taken away. I mean, Cyrus Q is just going to blow his smite on the wolves and put nothing else to use it on. And, well, they actually come out ahead in spite of kind of coming up behind in terms of the actual fight. Yeah, that was really good timing call. Like, in terms of decision making, that was exceptional. Just the knowledge of exactly what they had available to them and what uh, the team of Eternity had available to them was just, it was split second, it was instant, and it worked out. So, picking up the dragon will put them slightly ahead, as you mentioned. Bot Tower also goes down. So, I just keep looking for the counter engage, but this is going to head on back with two objectives out in the bag. Yeah, so starting to take that little bit of map control. We've got that Graves versus Caitlyn. And this is now kind of Caitlyn's doldrums. This is now the phase of the game where she's probably at her weakest. She's not got any major items, so she hasn't got that huge auto attack damage at range. And Graves, meanwhile, is starting to get that serious burst. And it looks like a movie may be wanting to take advantage of that, but he's been countered by Sven Skaren. Yeah, heading in from the side. Cursor Sad Mummy lands onto three and the crescendo one to two. Finite still laying down the hurt. Ben Skarin actually might take up the kill onto Cyrus Q. Moves instead onto Sona, picks up one. Moving on to Heydal. Still three versus two. Cyrus Q looking to body block out of the way. Huge out comes out from Tantrum and Finite still trading. Double kill comes in for Zyra. And that's the power of an ahead Sven Skarin on that Elise. So, so strong in that environment. Lego My Ego may look to kind of capitalize here, but he has been kind of counteracted by Kennen, who is just, you know, just going to ward him off with some, uh, some shurikens. But Sven Skaren on that Elise, in that situation where it's like a, it's like a kind of engage, disengage battle, and everyone is at really, really low health, and he's quite high level for a, for a jungle at this stage. That's incredibly powerful. Cyrus Q getting caught. And, and dead. And dead. Yeah, that, that. Uh, that's, that's not very exciting, I've got to be honest. But uh, that's the, the perils of walking into your jungle uh, when there is an enemy in it and you're on 25% HP. Yeah, the perils of walking, walking into your own jungle at uh, honestly 13 minutes is something you kind of expect to be able to just, you know, go in your jungle and farm, but apparently not when Freddy's on the case. Look at counter jungle himself, Vizic uh, Sachi, looking to once again try and steal this away from him, or at least trade off against him. Picks up the red buff, and now trading off against him. He won't be able to trade, but he can elastic sling shot out. Dark flight to follow after, and the auto attacks to keep him in place. Aggressive strike comes out for the slow, and still just wearing him down. Now to blob that's passive, he has blood well, he can afford to take out this and maybe take some hits from the turret with Massacre, increasing the range. Very smart play. Yeah, it also gives you that AoE nuke around you, and where Eternity were originally seeming to get some momentum in this game, they were ahead before that Dragon Call, now they are several thousand gold behind already. Sven Skaren looking scary, you've got Freddy looking scary, Kassadar is doing okay, and he's Kennen, so as soon as he's got his Zonias, he's set for life. It doesn't really look like there's much that uh, Eternity can do at this stage. Yeah, it seems like a copy, copy of the first game, not as quite as harsh as it was in the first game because they were just completely dominating to the point where there was no recall. This time, they have a good tank line. Caitlyn is actually doing better than, um, in fact, Finite was doing on Corky last game. Freddy finds himself caught by Cyrus Q, but this is actually in Cyrus just don't have the damage to take down someone like Archox. And honestly, with Massacre, he could easily one versus two. Yeah, it's it's really, really scary when you've got a tank top and a tank jungler and this kind of 
sustain heavy character has gotten really really ahead to the point where as you say their sustain damage might not actually be enough to force him away when he's got that sustain and a decent bit of resistance if he picks up that spirit visage it's going to be even harder to deal with him at the moment he's playing it careful but we could see that get really really nasty for eternity they may look for the engage on bot yes sarah's q lands also onto heydao and nick so once again exceptional but the counter engage with strangle force is strong but lines with lego my ego to reclaim a kill finite still there picks up one moving on to nixer and he pin him in place great um voice spice slows him down into the leap reset and a second kill but with kenan from the backside grave still there do they choose to go for this engagement they could definitely get it onto onto a move if he splits himself but finite is still there slicing mails from comes down lands the mark of the storm stun Zona now coming back into contention along with lego my ego not the best decision making but in the meantime haydel picks up one gets doesn't quite get the stun just as of yet misses the void spikes and they should be in the clear yeah, they're in. And then they're not. <laughs> Lego My Ego jumps under the turret. He gets picked up in return. Collateral damage picks up the kill. I was leaving it just for a couple seconds, just in case. Red team's turret has Another kill goes down. In fact, Finite picks up another. And, uh. Bunnington, are you, are you there? Did you mute yourself? Is it safe for me to talk? I, yeah, I, 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 I was, I, you, you, you had such good timing on saying, and they're safe there. I did. I, I just was, wasn't uh, sure. It was pretty great because I wanted to transition to you, and I was like, are you, are you, and then they engaged again. So it was just counter engaging, re engaging, and I've learnt my lesson. I can just carry on. Talking. Oh, the perils of being the pay play by play caster for today. Uh, so anyway. Zyra is kind of left alone in the bot lane. She's not really going to achieve very much with that. But Cyrus Q actually got barrier baited um, there in that fight by Hadel. And that's why they managed to pick up one kill and then back off. And then I think Hadel got baited by Finite's barrier. Certainly someone got baited by Finite's barrier. It was a double barrier bait. Oh, we do have a dragon timer now, which is covered by my post, post it note. I hadn't noticed that. <laughs> still, regardless, uh, very nice. And a catch in mid. Yeah, Spence Garen, I'll show you off with Lego My Ego. Another kill comes out for Karzix. Ready, one versus five. Karn doesn't have the sustain for this one. Katazar is there. Bloodwell comes into effect. Strangle forms with the counter engage. And Sarah's Q could be picked up. Flash comes out and uh, keeps himself healthy. And that's why I put my face in this at the bottom of my screen. Well, screw you and your intelligence. This is actually going in, and they pick up another kill. The disengage may happen here. Yeah, Crescendo comes across, and Katadol with the Zonia's Hourglass picks up one. Halo from the side, Clatal Damage comes in, looking for more. He could easily pick up more kills here. The jump comes out from Lego My Ego. It was not quite enough. He's still trading off. They have to be so careful. Kind of go like a one-shot shootout between um, Graves and everyone else on the enemy team. But they're still sieging. Halo looking for blood. Firing out the smoke screen, Lego My Ego still there. One combo will finish him off. In, in fact, one Q will. Great Duke out the way of another bandage toss. And uh, at least he's stopped them from pushing mid and his allies have come back in. Yeah, no one wants to be around when Sven Skaren gets back in and you can see they've gone. Uh, I would just like to note though, Sven Skaren has gone for that Spirit of the Spectral Wraith. So that's a telling sign that either he's feeling very, very confident about his carrying abilities or that we might see a Stealth Baron, especially when you have a team that has Atrox on it as well. But those two, at this point, would almost be capable of two-manning Baron. That is how strong they are in that environment. We'll see if they choose to go for it, and we'll see if Eternity are alert to it. But they have that option open to them. Yeah, and in fact, they did it last game with Zack and Vayne. So it might be another strategy they're looking to run. And uh, in Eternity's minds, they're going to be thinking, well, they could go for the two-man Baron because they did it last game. Uh, holding that fort for a second as we have some action in the mid, but there's no way they can do it if they don't have Vayne or they don't have the hyper sustain of Vizixachi, but they're not taking into account the hyper sustain of uh, Atrox and the Lees. Taking the blue buff away very quickly and engage the thing to happen from Zach. Jumps in, cuts off Nixa, Grom from the side, doesn't have huge amounts of damage, but Ismail comes in to assist, and the let's bounce, eventually wearing him down, kill for charge. 
rest of the team of Hados Pico, Vax on off, like my ego, looking to assassinate one of the carries. It's actually charging up. Elastic Sync got moving on to Hados. Spence Garen locks him down with Cocoon. But Katadal finds himself caught by Sarah's Q. Returns with a slicing Maelstrom, but doesn't manage to lock in the Zonny's Hourglass in time. But the penalty of having Vivisachi come down, or oh, this is Zach come down there, is that now Artrox is popping that ultimate, uh, getting Dota towered there quite badly, but will be able to take a big chunk out of this tower, and probably is not going to be killed either by, uh, oh, no, no, those two just do not have the damage, do not have the chasing potential, but uh, still, probably worth it. He was a little bit slower at pushing up that top lane than I expected. Finite takes some hits from Sven Skerin, and, uh, well, I guess it's Vizak Sachi. You can quote me on that. Hashtag fun the damage. So, uh... <laughs> no? No one? Okay. So, sorry. Oh, I had my mic muted. I'm dumb. <laughs> sorry. 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 farming the rest of his jungle and, uh... Yeah, I'm playing a more conservative game. They've got to be careful, though, that they don't get ground down because so many times we see teams just not taking risks and then just uh, actually losing out in the long run. Final gets caught. Collateral damage for the finish. Yeah, very, very stylish. He managed to, uh dodge out of the way but it was one of those occasions Caitlyn knew Graves was there and went for the aggression uh, went for the pelt over the wall to get that kind of head start in a fight between the two actually strangle falls on Lego my ego yeah great engage ability Lego my ego pops over the wall with flash no real follow-up walls over the wall to make sure he doesn't return to mid lane and now the siege comes in from Hadar's fight club we'll see if they have any recourse they do have curse of the sad mummy but out of turret they're not really looking for it yeah, this isn't actually a good scenario now for Eternity. Yes, they have very strong teamfight ultimates for Amumu, for Sona, and for Zac, but thus far, what's been keeping them in this game mostly is in these super chaotic fights. Lego My Ego on Karzix has been just incredibly scary. He's been bouncing around, picking up kills and around the place, and simply by virtue of his presence, zoning a lot of people out when it's messy. They do still have the potential to go for fights here. They're not that far behind. But they've got to be careful of the Zyra disengage, and they've got to be very careful about getting picked off by Sven Skaren. Yeah, what they do have is a 5-1-2 and two Kha'Zix, so good picking potential. But their team fight is really just quite lackluster. And when they're behind, split pushing doesn't really become that much of an option, because um, Hadal Fight Cup can react so quickly to it. And they have great duelers to the point where not only can they duel them, but almost instantly take them down and then continue their own push. So they're going to try that. Lego My Ego pushing down the bot lane doesn't have uh, the item of Tiamat, so his wave isn't amazing. Uh, he only really has Void Spikes to assist with that. And the fact, interesting evolution, right? He's gone for Leap first with the reset, and then gone for the Void Assault second. Now that is interesting, actually. I've not seen that choice yeah. before, but if you think about it, when you're looking at his role in this team fight, he is cleanup crew. The best cleanup skill you can give to Kha'Zix to, uh, in terms of evolution is that E, definitely. That R will also give him the flexibility to maneuver around the fight without needing to worry too much about being locked down, or at least certainly not as badly. But um, I would like to be referred to as Nostradamus in the future um, by <laughs> my basic ability of pattern recognition. They are doing Baron. Indeed, and with Graves finding himself in the bot lane and the push from Katadar and Migs. Honestly, I think it was around the same stage last game. And yep, the good the, the to take it with great tacky ability from the Spider Links and the same from both of these players. On top of the fact he has uh, Spirit of the Spectral Rape and he's in fact picked up Spirit Visage, they must have seen that coming. It's an interesting question because if they saw it coming though, they had the men in the right area. Yes, Kazix was committed to bot, but so was Graves. It would have been a 4 on 4, invading the Baron buff. I think they just didn't think about it. The thing is, they didn't want to run headlong in to a degree, but they have such a strong fight in a Baron pit that I can't believe that they would think it through and then say, nah, we're just, we're just gonna let them have a free Baron actually. You know, it's, it's not really important. Yeah, it's only huge amounts of stats and that 24 minutes is very important. Cyrus Q clearing out the waves with his team and now we get into the siege which uh, but with Baron with the extra damage and regeneration will be in very good shape and I think he goes over the wall <laughs> looks like they were trying to bait out Mixer and now the initiate comes out with Big Sachi he's got split from his team Banner shot doesn't land that's so critical 
Freddy picks up one and picks up the shutdown looking for the second and Haydel picks that one up. Now moving on to the rest of the team will at least split them away from the tower as they siege this one in. Since Garen might be on the side of or the wrong side of the tower but Great Repel keeps him in good shape and uh, that balance toss was so critical. Yeah, very unfortunate there. And I also noticed at the end, um, the snap trap uh, was was attempted to be put under Svenskaren's feet as he landed, but uh, apparently missed, even though he was repelled into the air with nothing to jump to. Regardless, that's going to cost an inhibitor at least, and they may look to push further on that. In fact, they won't. They've got my egos respawning. They don't want to you know, push their luck too far. They've taken a big advantage. They'll take the flu. They'll get their ward control established once to get once again in this bottom jungle. And I think also that top jungle is going to be the main focus. And then they are just going to go back, heal up, take the dragon, etc., etc. And then should be set and ready for another fight. Uh, probably the Baron Buff will time out before they get to make use of it again. Yeah, their main objective of taking the inhibitor was um, was done, so they didn't really have any need to do anything otherwise. Finding themselves Mixer moving into this crate. Freddy and Svensk Garen are still there, they're turning the corner. Dark like up to both of them. They've got Ego drops low, he's looking to please pick up one. Uses the ultimate in the one versus four. One for two. And honestly, I'm not convinced that uh, the ultimate was worth his life. It's so uh, it's so unfortunate. Again, getting caught out in that situation is it's just not they cannot afford to be getting caught out like that. Cyrus Q has actually um left the game and they have surrendered there. So that is the best of three going to Hadel's Fight Club overall. Very nicely played by them and Eternity looked like they might have a chance, but they just kinda lost it. Yeah, two very convincing wins from Haydar's Fight Club, just kind of outclassing them not only in lanes, but decision making, and it almost seems like their shot caller was just phenomenally better. Like, sometimes you'll see teams just organize themselves well, but you could see like the instant decision making happening from who I would assume is Fence Garen, because the shot caller is usually either support or jungler, but they were just all over them, and on honestly, Eternity were just too scattered. Yeah, very, very nicely done. But uh, I hope you can't hear the lawnmower. I didn't shut my window, which was very foolish of me. Uh, but anyway, that is the last of this best of three. There will be another best of three coming up in a while. I don't know exactly when, and we'll see if we can get it up as soon as possible. But uh, should be a timer appearing on stream in just a few minutes. And we will see you after this.